Welcome back. Today we talk about our version of Hot Girl Summer, aka reasonably attractive in the right lighting girl summer. Then apologize to someone from our past who has wronged us. This is the boardroom. I'm Sarah. And I'm Rachel. Psst. Hey, y'all want to see a dead body? Because I know where to find one. Meet me at the train tracks at midnight. Bring a camera. So, Rachel, as um, Prophet Megan the Stallion once said, as she was throwing racks on a, a stripper's quivering cheeks, it's hot girl summer. Yeah, it is. I think that's, I don't know if she actually <laughs> said those <laughs> lyrics in this song, but yeah. they were, they were in, in, they were in the song. Yeah. I saw the, uh, the haughty bat signal, if mm. you will, which is just, I don't even know what that symbol would be, like a bottle of crystal. <laughs> or like a, like a stripper heel, yeah. um, flashing in the night sky. Mm. And I heeded her call. So starting today, I'm going to take her advice. Now mm-hmm. we have a version of Hot Girl Summer. Yeah. <laughs> reasonably attractive in the right lighting, Girl <laughs> yeah. Summer. Which I feel, if anything, more more people can resonate with. Yeah. We're, we're women of the people. Yeah. we. Um, it's not just right lighting, it's also like, um, how you feel that day, the angle, what you're, yeah. the, 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 um, the room that you're in, the clothes yeah. that you're wearing. The visco filter you put on mm-hmm. it afterwards. Um, how dehydrated you look. Because then yeah. if, if you're dehydrated enough, dehydrated, I can't speak, dehydrated enough, you get that like really gaunt, almost like mm. POW <laughs> camp, yeah. you know, taunt look. Yeah. Which is very fashion. It's very high fashion to look like you're dying or suffering. Yeah. Either that or, like, slightly sleep-deprived mm. with the under-eye bags, which is a trend now where, literally, I've seen girls oh. on TikTok, like, literally, an ad. What? And it's it's offensive to me. I would be the hottest person, then, if those Unbelievable. were Unbelievable. I have dark, not even just under-eyes, but dark eyes in general. It's so odd. I yeah. my, The entire, I look like a little raccoon. <laughs> my eyes are really brown. It almost looks like I'm wearing very poorly applied brown eyeshadow <laughs> all the time. Yeah. But who knows? That's going to be a trend. Yeah. Remember You're a trendsetter. F- yeah, because of me. Mm-hmm. Remember how th- I mean, thick eyebrows were seen as like <laughs> yeah. weird. And now they're like everywhere. Yeah, and then Cara Delevingne came out. She was like, yeah. hello, guys, it's me, Cara Delevingne, and I've got <laughs> eyebrows like this. She doesn't sound like that at all. <laughs> she's posh. And she's also a perfect example of how I think my name, with any letter replacing the S, would sound infinitely cooler. Mm. Zara. Kara, Dara, Lara, Mara, Dara, Nara, Fara. <laughs> then I got I got the milk toast one. Yeah, Sierra. It's technically pronounced Sara. Oh, like that's how it's written in Amara. It's Sa, not Say. So it's yeah. Sara. What if you like actually it's Sara? <laughs> like if you say oh, that, God. I Ugh. bet you people would be. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I think that's the mm. problem. Is like the English pronunciation of it is Sarah. Yes. Yeah, but even though that is actually not my name, it's mm. Sara, which sounds cooler. It yeah. sounds more it sounds more ethnic. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, and I also like it more. Yeah. I wish I had a cool name like Chrysanthemum. <laughs> That's a flower. Mm. We were talking about something. Hot Girl Summer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, my version of Hot Girl Summer is just that I bought a single skirt. And I'm wearing mm. it today and might wear it about maybe five times in the mm-hmm. next three months. Yeah. And I feel like that's an adequate amount of times to show my legs to the public. Yeah, I think so. Because you, you want them to get a little taste, but you don't want them to get overwhelmed. Exactly. You can't and oversaturate I, the market. Ex- <laughs> yeah, I need to give them, I need to keep them wanting more. Yeah. And the thing is that any, like if I purchase a short skirt, a short skirt mm-hmm. on me is like an average length skirt because <laughs> my legs are so stubby and like short. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's kind of what sucks about having very short legs. Um, if I, because I also like wearing those chunky um, sneakers, the feel of sneakers. Oh, yeah. It sort of makes my leg look like a, if someone took a sausage and then like mm-hmm. tied it a little in the middle for my kneecap. Yeah. And that's what it looks like. And it's a little offensive to me. Mm. Not even a little. It's, it's very offensive to me. And um, that's why if you are over 5'5", five five, I hate you. <laughs> because I envy you. Yeah. That, um... You are of a reasonable height. You should get the Conan O'Brien legs. Oh, yeah, the ones that, like, start where his his, his pelvis is literally directly <laughs> underneath his diaphragm. Yeah. There is, like, four inches of distance between his nipple and his waistline. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
<laughs> Ew, that's so creepy. How does he get clothes that fit him? Yeah, I feel like all of his pants must be like custom. He said it was that Irish inbreeding. Yeah. Hey. He's literally like 100% Irish. Just should be genetically impossible. Yeah. There goes that racial purity test debunked. <laughs> Even though no one who believes in racial purity would um, count the Irish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a that's a group that <laughs> is pointedly disliked by that. Yeah. I um I don't know if you'll be following Hot Girl Summer. Yeah. I mean you follow Hot Girl year round. Yeah. I follow Hot Girls on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I <laughs> I do it all. But I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to do a little Hot Girl Summer because I feel like we all we all missed out on any sort of summer last yeah, summer that's true so i need to catch up I, I got my hot girl summer started recently went to new york city not too long ago it was it was crazy saw some comedy shows i was talking to a bunch of like comedians and stuff after the show because all of them they they were literally all the same person just like different heights and different races but they were all talking about like oh yeah back when i used to be addicted to meth and it was like back when i used to be addicted to coke like they were all like drug addicts drug yeah. dealers and they're like 22 yes <laughs> literally they're all like in their 20s like they've lived this like whole other life that i am not familiar with they were all talking about like yeah i tried to jump off the brooklyn bridge the other day but i just couldn't and i was like what <laughs> like this is just their normal wait that was a recent thing yes. <laughs> it wasn't even like years ago it was like no no the other day yeah he literally was like yeah the other day i was up on the brooklyn bridge i was like i should just jump And I was like, what? Like, they are the most just depressed, sad group of people. It's it's stand-up comedy. Yeah, I think think it kind of fit my expectations. (laughs) I would say for someone to pursue stand-up comedy, and this is speaking to someone who actually would like to do open mics. Yeah. um, You do need to have a level of, like, self-deprecation that's almost unhealthy. Yeah. Because it is masochism to do any sort of comedy, let yeah. alone live comedy alone on stage with only your material. Yeah. Come on. Like, that's that's torture. That's actual torture. Yeah. Let's just say stand-up doesn't attract that many, like, emotionally balanced <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> people. Yeah. The arts don't. Yeah. This is a fact that people don't want to admit, but if you go into the performing arts, there's, like, something a little bit wrong with you. True. I'd believe it. And also, if you think about how many, like, comedians and performers who have, like, lost drug addiction battles, have committed suicide, I feel like there's, like, like, if you compare that to, like, the number of accountants who have killed themselves, like, I feel like that's not even Mm -hmm. a fair comparison to, like, any other normal job. I guess it might be because, like, if you do have those issues and you're an accountant, you're probably gonna get fired after a certain point, <laughs> yeah. so you're not even in that. Stat and then you're gonna anymore. resort to stand yeah. up. you're because just an your unemployed. Life is so low. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, you're just an unemployed person with a yeah. drug problem. But if you're doing stand up, it's like you work nights. You're yeah. alone. You're traveling all the time. You're miserable. Yeah. You're working in like bars and places where there's always alcohol. Yeah. You don't get any money. People don't respect you. <laughs> Most Yo, people this don't like find you sucks. funny. Like it's yeah. it, legitimate. <laughs> this is what I mean. It's actually it's masochistic. Yeah. And I won't even say it's masochism because that implies you are you enjoying it to some level. You're not. Yeah. You're just in pain. Yeah. So I completely understand. Yeah. Anyway, so anyone who wants to do uh, their local <laughs> open mic night. Yeah. I really, really recommend it. Yeah. I'm hoping that I just sort of like affirmative action my way in. Where they're like, you're a black comedian, but you sound white. Here you go. Here's a special yeah. on Comedy Central. Yeah. Um, and then I'll appeal to those like, you know, white guilted liberal millennials mm. and Gen Z crowd. Yeah. Doing my, you know, um, racially ambiguous material that seems to kill <laughs> on this campus. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. You mentioned that you... Um, might have fallen in love with one of these men yeah oh because he liked a post of yours i believe he followed me on instagram because i was like hey man great set like i I was trying to be like i'm in with the new york city scene yeah Yeah. (laughs) even though i've been there like once no that was my second time ever in new york city but you know i know the city i'm a part of the culture Mm -hmm. now you're planting the seeds if he blows up in 10 years you could be like i knew that i knew it (laughs) when he was i knew that guy yeah (laughs) But yeah, he, he followed me on Instagram. He liked one of my posts. But then, okay, wait, I actually should, because I, I like, checked my Instagram the other day, 
And I'm pretty sure the post has like four less likes. So it was probably one of his. <laughs> he probably has unliked it. <laughs> but I still count it. He reposted um, some of the pictures that I took. Like, it's crazy. I think what we're in love. He made eye contact with me like mm-hmm. twice. Yeah. Pointed at me in the crowd. Like, I think I think something's there. A spark has sparkened and <laughs> something's going to happen. Your grasp on verbs is <laughs> I only know like 18 words. Um, I think that would be a great match. You know what they say. Yeah. I mean, struggling artist <laughs> men are just the cream of the crop. Mm, mm-hmm. Especially when they're comedians. Because you know if you have a fight, they're going to be like, my girlfriend. Yeah, no, yeah, literally that night on stage <laughs> will be like, you're welcome for the material. Dang. Um, can't wait to meet him. <laughs> yeah. So... You went to wait. You said you went to a comedy show in the park. Yeah. Okay. It was it was like the craziest thing because we were just walking through the park and then we see like a guy on a bench and it's like, uh oh, what's this about? You know, you think it's mm. either gonna be some like Kia David crazy church man yeah, preaching, yeah, like repent for your sins type. Of yeah, thing. some crazy preacher, some type of protest, something something happening. But it ended up just being a guy with a mic and a speaker on a bench, just like doing comedy. <laughs> But it was like it was like kind of sick. Like it was it was like the equivalent of like how musicians are like busking, like they'll sit, be singing yeah. songs. Like he was just doing material, just that anyone that was walking by, it was like, "Haha, your pants make you look like you work at IBM." Or like it was just the dumbest stuff ever. Was so he was like, just insulting people walking. Yeah, by. It, was, it was just like mediocre crowd work on a park bench. But I was having a great time. That's fantastic. And uh, he must have, like, been there at least for, like, a decent amount when when we, like, saw him. But we, like, sat down and we're, like, kind of listening. We're, like, wow, this is fun. And then, like, maybe, like, a few feet over, like, a, a few benches down, we just hear, like, this other bald, grown man just, like, screaming. And we're, like, is he, is he okay? And then he's just, like, I want to effing kill myself. <laughs> and he's, like screaming at the top of his lungs about wanting to kill himself like he wants this to end like all these all these crazy weirdly specific things and but then the the comedian guy is still up on the bench like trying to do the show <laughs> he's like hey you know blah 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 and he's like hey what's going on over there am i right <laughs> and then we just hear like i want to kill myself help me kill myself and it's like he's still trying to do the crowd work from there and then like after like maybe it was probably like two minutes he was like all right that's our show thank you very much and, like closed it up and they got out of there but it was i i felt like i had gotten a a very authentic new york city experience i i know what the comedy scene is like now yeah you checked off a lot of boxes there was a homeless person yelling at you you went to yeah. the park um, yeah. you saw an artist giving an impromptu performance no one asked for <laughs> yeah. um that pretty much is it yeah then they were doing it they called me a lesbian i was like well, how does everybody <laughs> it's that energy i know it's the headband it must it be. is you do give off like I've rescued several dogs from shelters type. <laughs> yeah. Um, just because I was wearing a tote bag and I just That gone, said I am a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, I had crazy earrings on and... <laughs> you were with your wife. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I was making out with my wife. People make so many assumptions. I know. Um, I lived in New York for um, a little while when I was yeah. at NYU. That's right. Um, it was... An interesting experience, let's yeah. just say that. I was not in Tish. Mm. Thank God. Um, <laughs> it was very... It's interesting to go to a school that has a very renowned, renowned like, performing arts school, but also mm-hmm. a very well-known business and finance school in mm-hmm. Stern. Yeah. Because it's, like, the peak version of those two types of yeah. kids. Because everyone thinks it's, like, STEM versus humanities that's not true it's Mm -hmm. the business and finance kids that are actually like the little demons yeah and so it was a bunch of like little patrick batemans (laughs) from american psycho Mm -hmm. and then whatever the theater equivalent to patrick bateman is um who's that lady that does all the screaming sarah paulson (laughs) (laughs) wait a minute but she's not a broadway person oh true patty lapone but i like patty Mm. lapone She's just famous. Who's who are okay? There's Patty Lapone, Barbara Streisand, Barbara Streisand, Kristen Chenoweth. Hmm. 
She was in Popular. Who's in Wicked? She was Rachel's mom in Glee. Oh, uh, Adina Menzel? Yes. Yes, Adina Menzel. I forgot what John Travolta yeah, called her. Yeah, what did he call her? Yeah. No- Adele Dezim. Wait, was it Adele Dezim? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Adele Dezim. Does he have dyslexia? Because <laughs> if he doesn't, how do you explain yeah, that one? That's pretty bad. Adina Menzel, Adele Dezim. <laughs> Yeah, and the Tony goes to <laughs> Adele Dezim. Does that mean he calls like, Adele I'm Ladina Menzel? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Anywho's, that was the people I was around. And there was also, mm. I think NYU has like the highest number of international students. Oh, wow. Which is odd because I thought it would be like an MIT grad program. But maybe yeah. for undergrad, I think they have the mm. highest number of international students. And so anytime I would go down to Soho mm. to shoplift, I'm kidding, no, just to like <laughs> loiter. Yeah. Um, and I would just, you know, be followed around by the person who was working the store because they were like, you're not rich enough to be here. Yeah. And at that point, it's just like, I just want to touch the furs. I just want to <laughs> run my hand through that chinchilla. Yeah. I would see some of the kids. It was always the international kids. They were the only mm. ones who were rich enough mm-hmm. who would be in the stores and actually looking. Yeah. Like actually looking for things to buy. It was like the kids. It was a lot of like rich Chinese kids. Mm. And you knew they were Chinese because they only hung out with other Chinese people, not other Asian people, specifically other Chinese people. And they would always be speaking to each other in like a regional dialect. It was very segregated. Yeah. Like uh, concerningly so. Um, Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. It was either them or like the children of Russian oligarchs. (laughs) What? Who you know they made their money in like the sketchiest way possible yeah. whenever you see like a blonde girl with a faint accent and she's like mm. yeah my dad is in oil <laughs> and uh, weapon sales you're like wow yeah. your um, your family has killed people yeah uh they but make they, the drones for yeah. the drone strikes and it's like oh that's how you can afford that townhouse <laughs> uh in the middle of like the west village yeah there was a kid i knew who was oh there were two people that these are these are my celebrity encounters very pathetic mm. celebrity you know nathan <gasps> lane is yes I was walking on, um, oh my God, me- ooh, is it Fifth Avenue? I was walking mm. on Fifth Avenue, which is where my uh, dorm used to be. And I, Nathan Lane literally walked by me and I sort of looked at him and I was like, that's Nathan Lane. Yeah. I also saw Anthony Weiner before he went to jail. What? Also on Fifth Avenue. Did you see his Weiner too? No, unfortunately, no. He was with his child. Oh. So it was concealed. His child was on his phone, mm. like doing like this. And he was like, okay, okay, don't, don't do that. And I understand, like, if you're on Anthony Weiner's phone, <laughs> don't go to the photos. Yeah. Just don't don't open the careful. photos app. Yeah. Um, I saw them. I saw Selena Gomez going out of a Brandy Melville, and I knew this because her wow. security, someone, like some paparazzi, I'm assuming, was like, Selena. And I'm mm. like, isn't she dead? But <laughs> it was not her. Yeah. And then her security literally pushed me out of the way as she got into a black Range Rover oh that was gosh. behind me. Um, who else? I saw Carly Kloss get out of an <gasps> elevator in Gallatin, which was wow. the building I was in. I was in the same elevator as Anna Sophia Robb from Bishop Terabithia because she goes to NYU. And I was just wow. standing there and she was right next to me and I was like... That's so crazy. I also met the kid who was in Moonrise Kingdom because he was at Tish and he's the same age as me. Wow. We were When we were walking around, we saw Jonathan Groff just like eating dinner. And I was like... <laughs> yes! Because I was like... I Because we were like... Wait, I think that was John. I think that was John Tegra. Like, wait. And so we like circled around the block again and walked by just to like make sure. <laughs> We're like, that was definitely him. I oh. was hoping he could like spit on me or something, but oh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to interrupt his dinner, so yeah. we just kept walking. But and eating, Jim Gaffigan. I saw eating at, <gasps> at a Shake Shack. Oh, Jim Gaffigan's great. He is. Man. Life's crazy. I don't know. Sometimes when you see a celebrity or a famous person in real life, it's very like, huh, you're not supposed to be <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. But then you, and then I get over it. I don't think I've ever been starstruck. I think that's yeah. the thing. It's just you see them and then you're like, oh, they're shorter than I thought they'd be. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh. That, like, yeah, that magic like is kind of gone. Yeah. That's like, because we, we saw a taping of The Tonight Show, and then, like, Jimmy came out, and it was like, oh, like, it's just, <laughs> that's Jimmy Fallon. It's just a little noodle. Yeah. Don't they, like, make you laugh? Like, don't they have a thing? They're, yeah, there's an applause thing, and then <laughs> literally the warm-up, because there's, like, a warm-up, like, comic hype man type yeah. guy, and he was like, even if it's just a ha-ha kind of chuckle, really full send it. Like, we were like, what? Like, he was like, even if it's not that funny, we really need you to crack up. And I was like, 
Is this? Yeah. Uh, do we get paid more? Yeah. Like, I was what like, happens? Are you sure? In that NBC building. Is Jimmy in NBC? Yeah. Man, that 30, 30 Rock, Rock must be jam-packed. If someone bombed 30 Rock, that's like... Oh, my God. That's I like... That's, that's devastated. 90% of, like, comedy would <laughs> yeah, be gone. Literally. I mean, we had 90, maybe like 50. Yeah. It would be like 90% of late night. Where does Conan shoot? In LA. Oh. Largo Theater. I see. Or at least Largo nowadays, but his show's going off this summer. He's going to have an HBO show, though. Oh, coming. okay. He's, he's been tired. on for, like, almost 30 yeah, years. Yeah, he's done. Yeah. Uh, Good for I him. I love Conan. Good for that nice ginger representation. <laughs> yeah, finally. He is, honestly, probably the most liked late night yeah. person. Um, so I think, it, I think it says a lot that, like, he has a big like fan base audience and also uh, all of the comedians like every interview or whatever i've seen where people talk about conan like no one ever talks poorly i don't know that you could say that about like any other late night host no and it's odd because he didn't come from a stand-up yeah which i think makes sense because a lot of times if you were because he was a writer he was not a performer Mm -hmm. and i think when you're a performer that is that becomes an interviewer it's weird because mm-hmm. then you're like no it's my show yeah <laughs> but why are we talking about this oh new york <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> it's incredible to me how we like we go on so many tangents i'm yeah. like how did we get to this conversation yeah i um i will you, bring up conan at any opportunity I can. as you should um True. I like you've pretended to to be on a late night show and you're like, oh, oh my god, Jimmy. Every <laughs> night. Yes. Every night. Of course. This is I would say the most common like pastime for delusional people. Yeah. Is me because when I was younger, in my head I was like, of course I'm gonna be famous when I'm yeah. older. Of course. Like it wasn't even a <laughs> It was uh, just a like when, if, not an Yeah, if. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I would remember I'd be sitting in my room because I already talked to myself and my family yeah. was already aware of it. Um and I would just sort of be like, yes, um, blah, 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 blah. And it's just, yeah. I think now I'm almost scared because I don't want to get famous enough where I'm asked to do interviews. Mm. I know for a fact it would be so unbearably yeah, awkward. like those press junkets oh where you got to do like God. eight interviews like back to back to back. And it would suck because I would get on there and I would just be so weird and creepy. <laughs> and then everyone would be like, she's a comedian? Like, yeah, what? Like, what? <laughs> That's gross. That's icky. It's going to be, oh my God, I'm going to be like the next Amy Schumer. I actually don't hate Amy Schumer. Yeah. Yeah. Her hate wagon Mm -hmm. was so, it was the perfect example of when people jump on a hate wagon. Yeah. Just because they're bored. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It was so odd to me. I think the accusations were like, she stole some jokes Eh, I don't know. Some of them, I'm like, all right, that's a little too close. But then yeah. others, it was like the premise was similar, but the setup was different and the punchline was different. Yeah. And I'm like, if you rifle through the you know hours and hours of material of every single comedian, of course, yeah. there's going to be similar. Yeah, jokes. Because I, I feel like what comedian doesn't have a joke related to like sex or relationships or you know like uh, some of these like yeah. common themes that they were mm-hmm. calling her out for. It's like, come on. And there was also one joke that was, like, about how someone, some woman was Asian or something, right? And then she was just like, oh, I didn't even know you were Asian. Like, a joke, which is, like, it's such an easy joke to make yeah. about race. And then it was, like, this other comedian had a joke about his accountant who was Asian. And he said something similar to her. And I'm like, huh? I, d- I could definitely find at least ten other comedians who've made a, who've made a joke like that. Yeah. It was very much the people didn't like her already, and then they needed, mm-hmm. like, a a solid reason and they're like yes yeah. we got him yeah um yeah i don't know you can only talk about your virgin so many times before people are like true all right amy this is a little but the reason i think it is bs though is because i remember before people started hating her because i remember watching her interviews and stuff and you go to the comments it was like overwhelmingly positive mm-hmm and then now everyone is like, I never thought she was funny. I never yeah. And I'm like, y'all are so fake. Yeah, you lie. Y'all are so fake. It is so annoying mm-hmm. when people do this. And anyway, now she has a documentary about her husband having like Asperger's or something. Mm-hmm. And it's oddly sincere. <laughs> like you can tell she genuinely loves him and uh-huh. it's not like a joke. Yeah. I'm like, good for her. 
Yeah, that's nice. And I don't know. I feel like at this point, sometimes I see the people that get hatred in the media, and then you look at what they do, and it's like, you know, being cringy is not like, does it deserve <laughs> yeah. this level of vitriol? Yeah. I'm just saying, she got more hate than, like, war criminals. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, tone it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That being said, she is doing Tampax commercials now. I saw. At this point, I've gotten, like, ads I'm like, it. honey. I'm like, just, I mean, is the Tampax money that good? It can't be. Probably. I'd, I'd assume. I'd do it. Yeah. I'd do a tampon commercial. Yeah. I mean, none of my material has anything to do with my regime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if Tampax came to me right now, and they were like, do an ad for us where you're dressed as a tampon or something. <laughs> I don't have any dignity. I'd do it. You're just a string. You're not even. Yeah, like the no, it's thing. a two parter, like those horse costumes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You don't even get to see me because I'm the one in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Anywho, that's our New York material finished. Um, yeah. I do have a very quick question for you, Rachel. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think OJ did it? Oh. Um, quickly yes answer. oh <laughs> yeah you know what i'm gonna play devil's advocate mm. i'm gonna say that he's innocent um because actually if you look at the evidence mm -hmm. i think nicole brown simpson and ron goldman stabbed themselves like they ran into oh. those knives several times <laughs> yeah uh she nearly decapitated herself mm. um i don't know how the knife went missing <laughs> but um that's my theory yeah um I think it's hilarious because I just watched The People vs. O.J. Simpson for like the third time over because it's mm. a phenomenal show. Mm -hmm. And the entire time, I'm thinking like, one, the media is trash. Mm -hmm. uh, two, O.J. Simpson is one of those people who is a historical figure in a way that like I could only dream of being. Mm. And I mean that in the sense that he was such, he was such a horrible person. Do you know how much it takes for people to remember that you were like a bad person? Yeah. As an individual, not as like a warlord or like a king or an yeah. emperor where people, you know, your enemies can like, <laughs> your evil little scribes can be like, this king was a tyrant and yeah. blah, 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 blah. No, he was just a football player. Yeah. And now everyone hates him. But at least he's on Twitter. Yeah. It's it's impressive. I get impressed by people doing anything to like the max, even if it's not yeah. even if it's not good. Yeah. That's just the type of woman I am. I um I appreciate hard work. And I appreciate being able to get off for double double homicide despite there being DNA evidence <laughs> of all of your blood mixed together. <laughs> yeah. And no other suspects. And but a history of domestic fit. violence. Yeah. And the, the glove, glove not fitting over him wearing a latex glove underneath. I'm like, of course it's not going to yeah. fit. Doing his little hand exercises. Oh, my God. He was like, <laughs> it doesn't fit. It doesn't. And I'm like, apparently it did fit. Because Marsha Clark, when they made him try it on evidence without the latex, it fit him perfectly. But you didn't Dang. see that on the TV. Yeah. Well, now that we're done with our O.J. Simpson um, portion of our <laughs> podcast, O.J., if you're it's out always, there, we're always, always looking somebody, for new sponsors. Yeah. You know, we could <laughs> we could dog your merch. We know how um, attached you are to your merchandise. Allegedly incorporated. Please stop. Or hypothetically. Hypothetically. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That I, my favorite part of the hypothetical, well, he wrote a book about how he like would hypothetically have killed um nicole and ron and then i think one of the questions was like was the was the back door open when you um hypothetically went in and he's like i don't recall which is like what you don't recall a hypothetical anyway i we've met we've repeated a lot of these uh segments but i my brain at this point yeah. i don't understand i don't remember anything that happened like two hours ago yeah so this is gonna be our last section Ooh. of the night um Oh, yeah, you don't know I can do sounds. <laughs> yeah, this you're is a, a Foley artist <laughs> for the episode. Yeah, I'm a full soundboard. Um, we're going to do a section that is called I'm Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> so this is where we apologize to people. Mm. 
in our past yeah uh, that <laughs> yeah might have hurt a little bit mm-hmm. um and the first person I'm going to apologize to is a, a boy. I think his name is Mickey. <laughs> this is a boy was sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was told in the way that all middle schoolers tell people that they like each other is mm-hmm. their friends come over and then they're like, this person like you. And yeah. you're like, what? You guys are liars. And they're like, like no, he like, like me. Yeah. <laughs> um, or like, do I run to his mom? Like, what do you mean? Like, do <laughs> yeah. And they're like, no, 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 like he likes you. And we sit next to each other in class so i was like Mm-mm. all right maybe there's something there yeah and so i came up to him mind you let me give you a visual we had a school uniform they were mm. the ugliest things you have ever seen in your entire life these were like mm-hmm. ethiopian school uniforms where the dresses were this like dark green like a seaweed green mm. the skirts were so long they were like what like mennonites would wear <laughs> or they were pants they were oh. the same color and i was like all right i'll just wear the pants then right yeah. So I was wearing the pants, like Skechers, <laughs> Skechers <laughs> shoes. My hair was in braids, mm-hmm. um, like raggedy braids that were like, they would, <laughs> they would like defy gravity. Yeah. And I uh, went up to him when he was sitting in like the courtyard of the school. And I went up to him and I was like, Mickey. And he's like, yeah. I was like, do you like me? And he's like, um, yeah. And I was like, well, don't. And he's like, what? What does oh that mean? And I was like, I was like, stop liking me. And then I just turned around and marched away. And then I guess he stopped liking me. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember feeling so, the idea of someone having a crush on me made me feel like disgusted. Yeah. And it wasn't even him. It wasn't like the, him have, liking me that made me feel weird. It was just mm-hmm. the, the idea of anyone, period, liking me yeah. just made me feel so uncomfortable. And for the rest of the week, I was like, I hate being seen. I hate being recognized. <laughs> as I don't want to be perceived. Exactly. I don't. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like that I existed in, in another person's mind. Yeah. It freaked me out. Very different now. Mm. So, Mickey, if you're listening to this, <laughs> yeah, if you're hit still me around. Up. Right, just unblock me. If you and, still like me. <laughs> um, so that's the person I'd apologize to, because I mm. felt like that was a little much, but I was yeah. also, like, 11. Yeah, you didn't know. So who's the person you would apologize to? I'd probably say um, the homeless woman I beat up in New York City. Um, you know, okay. I... I wanted to give her some money, so I threw, like, a handful of pennies that I'd stolen out of a tip jar. Oh, okay. I Naturally. just threw them at her, and, you know, I, that felt wrong to me. Oh, uh, I thought it was because you wanted to see her. Do you want to see how desperate she was to see if she would, like, actually pick them up? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was that was the original intent, but then I realized, like, these pennies could, like, maybe do some damage. So mm. I wanted to, I just kind of chucked them and... You know, I feel like that's wrong. You know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have done it. Okay, maybe mm. there are nicer ways to treat people. Because maybe Allegedly. homeless people are people. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, the jury's still out. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's like, do poor people deserve rights? I mean, that's a question <laughs> that I think, like, all of us um, yeah, are I pondering. Yeah, I constantly debate that every day. Mm-hmm. I would say that... Uh, I'm assuming if the woman is homeless, she probably is not listening to this podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, Imagine if she was. She's she's one of our no. like three listeners. She's like, three I trusted listeners you. Are all homeless people. It would make sense. They play they, this at like the Salvation Army. Like stop. Soup oh my kitchen. god, no. <laughs> That's how we know. Yeah. That's how we know we've made it big. Yeah. When they start like forcing people to listen to <laughs> us, basically, or else they don't get to eat indoors. <laughs> um, yeah, the people would rather starve yeah. than come in to listen. <laughs> wow. If, what if they used us to like clear out homeless people underneath like um, bridges and stuff? Oh, yeah. They, oh my gosh, I read, this was like a while ago, I read this story. Like, I forget where this was, but it was, you know, in some like park or something. They wanted to clear out the homeless people living there. So they would blast Baby Shark from, like, midnight to, like, 4 a.m. in that park every single night to get people to get out of there. Joke's on them, because I'm deaf. (laughs) That's so... That's mean. Yeah. It's like when they put spikes... Yes. Like, uh, uh, or they have benches where they deliberately have that little... Yeah, like, the handle things. Just say you hate homeless people and go... 
Uh. <sighs> Drives me bananas. Anyway, we say this, but like I'm also not helping homeless people. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, why aren't they doing more? As I like, don't make eye contact yeah. at all mm. with a homeless person. When I, I walk volunteered by. in a soup kitchen once. True, it was like obligatory, <laughs> yeah. but um. I was like, the state was like, you have to do this many number. I'm saying this like not because it was like court ordered, but it was like my school. <laughs> yeah. Um, like those like service hours. Yeah. Or yeah. To yeah. Graduate. And I used, to, I used to crank those babies out in the summer. Mm. That's you got to be smart. You got to go to the, like a, yeah. a nursing home or something and like play checkers with them and, you know, pretend <laughs> to care about their grandchildren. Yeah. Um, and then just like hear their like weirdly racially insensitive comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of like you remind me of the this the my Puerto Rican secretary and I'm like that's nice um, yeah. and his secretary is like Filipino or something <laughs> um, so that was the end of our segment uh, we again we apologize from the bottom yeah. of our hearts for the people that we hurted yeah uh, we hurted you bad and we so sorry, sorry. <laughs> so the last little thing I want to touch on is that I graduate in July Woo-hoo. I bought the cap and the sash <laughs> oh, yeah. but not the gown because that was like 56 bucks and for oh like God. It, they, they literally make it out of the cheapest material <laughs> on earth yeah um it's like if you if you literally sit in the sun for too long the cloth will catch fire it's so <laughs> cheap yeah the cap and that little red the sash thing with oh, the school yeah. name on it that's all you need i don't know if i graduate with honors not, mm. to, not to brag but <laughs> i don't know isn't it like what is it like top twenty in your class? I have no idea. I think it might be different depending on what school you're in. Right, exactly. That's the thing is, it's not necessarily a grade point average. It's just like, yeah. did you do better than other people in your class? Which could yeah. mean anything. I am gonna say this. I don't care if it sounds braggadocious. I struggled more in high school than I did in college academically. Really? Weirdly enough. Wow. I don't know what not that. Not the case for me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But to be fair, you did very well in high school, I'm assuming. Yeah. I got good grades. Here's the thing. I was one of those people where, like, freshman year, I fully, like, I don't know, had, like, a mental breakdown. And then, f- mm. so, my grades were so polar opposites. I was literally getting straight A's in half of them and then, like, C's and D's <laughs> in the other. It was it was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, that's like me now like all my like elective gen eds i get a's and then all the classes that actually matter i get like a c i think once i got to college i realized like okay these are the courses i know i'm going to suck at and these are the ones even if they were hard i knew i'd be like okay i can at least pull a b in this yeah it wasn't until my senior year of high school that i realized that and then i got all a's all year baby that's how you do it that's how you do it choose remedial classes and (laughs) things that you suck at (laughs) People try to overdo it. They're like, I'm going to take all APs. I'm like, no, no, no. Take APs mm, and honors in, in courses that you're good at. Mm, and then chill true. out in the other ones. True. Sometimes people are like, I want to push myself. And I'm like, you're going to push yourself to a C minus, okay? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I know you want to get into like Towson or whatever, <laughs> but. Sorry. <laughs> Are you laughing at the idea of someone applying to Towson? I wow. The idea of, but no, uh, <laughs> this is gonna sound so <laughs> gross. But to me, the idea of like worrying I won't get into Towson, <laughs> like <laughs> I think that's kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. I'm there with you. <laughs> I think my grade point because I got my my crap together mm. eventually. So my GPA averaged out, and it was actually pretty good Mm -hmm. by the time I was a senior. And so I pretty much got into, like, all the schools I applied to. And then once I got into NYU, I was like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Top 30 school. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Lawrence waitlisted me. That was the only school that, like, didn't accept me, I think. Which was fine. A little offended because it was like, that's my name. (laughs) Yeah. But, hey. It wasn't in the city. It was like 30 minutes away from the city. Mm. And also the ratio of men to women, the ratio of women to men was like seven to three. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. I don't think that ratio makes any sense. <laughs> I meant to say it's 70% women. Seven yeah. to three is like, no, you have to be able to divide into that, right? I don't is know it how two math to one? works. You're a math major. What do you mean you don't know how math works? <laughs> hey, I'm off the clock. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. Well, that's um, 
That was a tangent from something I was talking about graduating. Yes. Yeah. Graduating. School. Not excited, <laughs> but I'm also not like dreading it. Yeah. It's got it's yeah, it's got its pros and cons. Yeah, It's uh it's okay. Yeah. It'll be nice not to have homework. That's the only thing. That's the only because yeah. I'm I'm holding out that like when I hopefully one day at least have some sort of real job, some sort of steady income mm-hmm. that like at five or whenever my work day ends, I can be like done. Yeah. And I can have time to focus on the fun stuff. Unless you go with one of those people that takes your home your work home. I know. I'm but, afraid that's gonna be the case. Oof. At least my job does not have that. It's like once you're done, you're done. Yeah. For the day. And that's the good thing. I remember because I was at college and working life is very different because your mm-hmm. schedule is all over the place in college. And yeah. then it's so much more regimented afterward. Fingers crossed I don't lose my mind. <laughs> yeah. That's why I wish I wish those those like dumb job. I don't want to say dumb, but like those jobs where you're just doing the same thing over and over again. Or it's like this doesn't take a lot of like brain power to do. I would love one of those where like it's probably gonna drive me crazy that I'm just doing the same dumb task over and over again. Mm-hmm. But I would love like to an have assembly that. line worker. Yes, I would love to be that. Like I mean, my mind could be free outside yeah. of the workplace, and I could just be doing a task. Like, bam, hey. they're paying me to have my free thinking thoughts, man. I get that, especially if you were like. I would assume that in that sort of job where your mind is just, like, zoinked out. Yeah. If you're a writer or you could just sort of, like, think of things. Yeah. This proves how little I know about working. Because I don't (laughs) think in that, you're not like, let me do double the amount of labor (laughs) physically and then mentally where you're going to exhaust yourself. It would be great if we had, like, the benefits of people who were assembly line workers in the 50s. Yeah. Not now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) R.I.P. the, uh industrial cities of america yeah sorry detroit yeah that's what i have to say r.i.p detroit sorry it's not the 50s anymore daddy ford can't come yeah save you true <laughs> i don't know why we started singing um should we sing the rest of the episode we should not <laughs> yeah okay yeah that was the correct that was the correct thing to do um honestly we've sort of exhausted um Every single yeah. possible We've way that we could, yeah, every, it's dry. Every point. There's no drops left. Yeah, and that's all we got to say on that. Tune in next week for another episode. See ya. The Boardroom with Sarah and Rachel is a production of Rails Comedy Network. The Boardroom is produced by Walker Green and edited by Rachel Nicewander. Stephen Duransky is our graphic designer, and our theme music is by Doug Maxwell and Media Right Productions. You can follow us on Instagram at Boardroom Podcast. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Boardroom on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Like, comment, rate, and review. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Solicit us. We'll take anything.